Welcome to Mixed Media Creations with me, Creative Katie, Karen Virchel. Today we have an art journal inspiration challenge video. These happen around the 15th of every month. Links to the other collaborators' videos can be found in the description box below. Please check them out. Lots of variety there. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button in the lower right hand corner. So this month's challenge was to use all the colors of the rainbow, Roy G. Biv. And since lately I have been really focusing on using a limited color palette in my art journal and my canvases, this really threw me for a loop. And what you're seeing today is, you know, kind of the third try. I wanted to do something different than what you see here, where I basically have the colors of the rainbow and put a silhouette in front. Here's what I ended up with. I hope you enjoy it. So I have all the colors in my Liquitex Basics or Artist Loft paint. And my basic plan here is to get all these colors on the page and I'm going to use the color wheel to make sure that I don't put colors next to each other that are across from each other on the color wheel because those are going to make some unpleasant color that you don't really want. If I put blue and yellow together, I know I'm going to make green and that's okay because that's a color that I want. So I'm just putting the colors on here, making sure that every color is represented. It's quite wet. I'm moving quite quickly so that the, some of the paints can blend if I want them to blend. Now, could I have put this on with a paintbrush? Absolutely. I just find, you know, sometimes it's really freeing just to get that paint on your fingertips and put it down in this way. As I was saying, this was my third attempt at a page. I had lots of ideas, I just couldn't focus my brain enough to settle on one. And this page continued to give me a bit of a fight, as you'll see later. I'm not too worried that the colors aren't overly blended. I'm gonna add a little bit of white, but it's really dulling them down. I want to preserve the brightness, so I kind of stop doing that. So after giving this a dry, I want to add some pattern and visual texture onto the page. And I'm just using a variety of mark making tools and some of these are recyclable. This is the bottom of a um, paper plate holder. You know, getting out some of my texture stamps and stamping on there in black and white because we have enough color on the page. Here's one of my favorite homemade stamps, the Swirl Stamp, and I really like the black that this added, the starkness and the contrast. And I'm just stamping those stamps into acrylic paint on the side. I put the paint, you know, spread it out on my craft mat and then put the stamp into it. When you do that, um, you just need to make sure that you clean your stamps right away so that the acrylic paint doesn't clog it up. This is a stamp from um, a Tim Holtz set, and I'll put a, a link to description in the description box below. And I, need, I thought I needed some white to add to this to, to brighten and lighten this up. Of course, at this time, I really didn't have a plan, so this is quickly becoming one of my favorite stamps. I had this forever and never really used it, and now it's one of the first things I reach for. I um, will find the link for it as well, but I did. I think I bought it at Michael's. So I'm taking the Stabilo All Pencil and I'm tracing circles. I've decided that I'm going to do some negative painting. I just want some bubbles. 
and I'm just using various sizes of this template. Now you can freehand circles if you want, and by the end of it, it kind of looks like I freehanded circles. Now I use the Stabilo All Pencil, which causes me a little grief once I start painting out with white, because of course, once that gets activated, it kind of turns gray. So to avoid that, you could have just used a pencil or something that was more permanent that wasn't going to activate. So the colors are really, really bright and you know, I think that was part of it. There was just so much going on in this background. You just didn't know what to do. So I'm grabbing a paintbrush and using some white paint, I'm just whiting out all the background, everything but the circles. Now, the key to this, to get it smooth, is to do thin layers and dry them in between. Or kind of lightly take your brush afterwards and go on top of where there might be some um, higher points. So I'm doing a, a coat right now, and I think I'm using Dilution's white, white paint. And when I get this done, you can see that you still see some of the background peeking through. And, you know, not enough was showing through, or too much was showing through. And I, and I kind of didn't know which way to go. So I grabbed a baby weapon. I thought, oh, you know what, I'm going to wipe this back. I'm going to, you know, right now I'm getting rid of that Stabilo, any of the leftover Stabilo. And I'm just wiping, wiping back some of that white paint. And if you use the baby wipe and it's a little bit damp, it seems to be able to lift that quite well. So I'm lifting the white paint because I'm thinking, okay, well, maybe if I see more of the color and make it kind of cloudy, that will be a good look. So that's where I ended up. And it was okay. And I grab my Payne's Gray and I'm just using the float technique to outline and shade around these circles. The idea behind this is that I want these circles to pop up the page. I want them to stand out a lot more than what they are right now. And I'm using Payne's Gray instead of black because there's a lot of blue in the background. And at this point in time, I thought, you know, I didn't want to be quite as stark as the black. So you can see that by doing this shading, it totally makes these bubbles pop. I really like the negative painting technique. I, I can't say that I've really perfected it yet. Um, I, I'm really drawn to it. So you'll see where this one goes. just adding a little bit more. Even when you're doing the shading with the float technique, you need to draw in between. You can always make it darker over time. And you don't want to go over the same area or touch the same area if it's still wet. And I decide I want to do some shading around the outside edges, so I just grab a makeup sponge and with some of that leftover Payne's Gray, just kind of sponging it on the edge of the papers. This is also something you do when you don't know what else, what next. This kind of, I think it just buys us, buys us time. <laughs> okay. 
So now I'm thinking, okay, what else can I add? But I grab my charcoal pencil, my woodless charcoal, charcoal pencil, and do around the edges. Then I grab my liner, fine liner bottle, and make kind of messy circles around um, the circles. I'm thinking, okay, I could put the butterfly there. And that's where I went to bed. And it was okay. I wasn't completely so happy with it. I chatted with a few people. And I decided that, you know what, I'm going to go, I'm going to paint out the background. I'm going to go completely white. Someone pointed out that the, if, you, if I go with a more opaque white, then the colors will just appear that, mu that much brighter. So I get out my Liquitex Basics and I thin it down a little bit and I am putting another coat. Even though basically it was pretty much done. So this is where my circles become really wonky circles because I'm just overworking it. And again, once the paint starts to get a little tacky, you need to stop and let it dry and then come back and do another layer. So now that it's white, I'm redoing the um, shading around it, like you saw me do before. And again, I'm using the Payne's Gray and drawing it in between before I go to the next circle. that I want it to be a little bit bluer. So I grab my Stabilo All Pencil, the blue one, and I'm tracing around the circle and then activating with my round brush. But like so many things on this page, it just, it was just the wrong shade of blue. Then I grab my Distress Crayon and go around it. And yes! It worked. It's giving me the color and the look that I like. Hey, you know what? Mixed media didn't get its name by keeping to one particular media, right? <laughs> and that just goes to show. You just keep working it till you get the effect you like. And sometimes that means you're, you're basically redoing steps. But if you removed any one of the other steps, it may not just end up the same way. So they all add just that little bit of something something. So it was pretty much at this point that it finally was like I was in gear. That that I this page just took off for me. I it stopped fighting me and we were working together. Just decide I'm gonna frame it in the blue. I love using the Distress Crayons. Um, they just seem to work so well for me, much better than the Gelatos. Still trying this butterfly out. Now, the white is still kind of bothering me, and this is, you know, what do you do with that white space? And so I thought, okay, you know what? I'm gonna splatter on it. Now, this is gonna hide some of the inconsistencies, I guess, in the white, where it's it, some is more opaque than others. It just kind of camouflages it and ties the whole page together. So I just mixed some of the Payne's Gray with, I think, an ultramarine blue. Then I got this swirl stamp, and I'm using my blue um, archival ink, and I'm putting this blue on there. And then it just I just loved how this looked. The white didn't become so stark. It kind of has a blue tinge to it. You know, the bubbles kind of look like they're on air, swirling. That was kind of the feeling I was going with, and the stamp kind of tied in together. Still trying that butterfly. It doesn't make the final cut. <laughs> then I found a quote in amongst my clippings that says, life is a balance of making it happen 
and letting it happen. And I was playing with fonts and gluing little words together so it looks more like a stamp. Edging it with the archival ink, with the makeup sponge. And then just going to glue this down with some gel medium. I toyed with the idea of mounting these onto a little bit of blue uh, collage paper or deli paper or just painted paper just to add that little bit more blue on there. But edging it seemed to be enough. So looking at it, Nope, edging it wasn't enough. So I used the fine liner and I went around it with black because the black of the letters needed to tie in with the page. And then I'm just doing two sketchy lines down the sides to frame the page. And again, have that black in multiple places on the page. I love this fine liner bottle. It, it was the best thing. And I use it so much. What follows are some pictures and close-ups. Please check them out, like the video, share it with your friends, and please check out the other collaborators' videos. Every one of us have a very different style and uh, looks great. Adding, the, going back with the fine liner, putting another layer on the circles because I've painted over some. Thanks again for watching. Enjoy.